Alright, so here is the start of my cross guard. I've just found a piece of scrap bar. It's uh, going to be wide enough at the block and long enough, as well as, of course, thick enough. Uh, it's not going. Okay, so I've marked out where I need to drill for the tain to go through, and I'll be drilling few more holes in there and uh, using a file to clean up the thickness but uh, yeah I'm going to drill it out and once it's drilled out then I'll through stock removal and grinding thin down the sides to taper them in so it's not going to be this wide at the end um, important points uh, a pen is not really accurate enough for this kind of work so a uh, one of these scribing things, whatever they're called, is what I'm using just because it's more accurate when giving me points. And uh, yeah, that also gives me a point and a little divot for the drill to be in when I start the drilling, but my drill is pretty much dead at the moment. Alright, now the reason why I leave it thick is in case my my hole's a little bit off. I can just count. I can just correct for that when I grind the rest of the. Yeah. If my slot is a little bit off, I can correct for that in the grinding to bring it back in line. Also, what else was there? Oh yes, when you're if you decide to hot drift this, be warned that. I don't know. For some reason, this section can get a little thin as it stretches out. In like, there. so you end up having a bow or a dip in the middle of your cross guard. I've had it happen before, so, so something to keep in mind. To remedy remedy that, I'd say just go with thicker material and grind it down. So even if it does bow you can just grind it flat so I've drilled out uh, the width of the tang into the cross guard uh, and I've kind of rounded the insides of it I just used grinder on a low setting with a thick grinding wheel just use the radius of that to inset it a bit because we don't want sharp we do not want sharp 90 degree angles at the base of our sword because that would be creating a weak spot or a point where uh, stress would be focused. Now to reset to recess the blade a little bit deeper I've put it in, lined it up straight and went around it with a sharpie or a permanent marker uh, looks a little wonky, I might have to double check that before I grind it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some cut off discs, because they're nice and thin, and I'm just going to cut in so that there's a slightly lower platform on the inside. So that the edge of the blade can just sink down below the level of the cross guard. For the grip, I'm doing it as a stacked, um, three layer cord wrapped, leather wrapped uh, uh, grip so I scored out the outline of the tang onto this piece of wood got some six mil thick wood ran it from point to point so the outside is a nice straight line but uh the inside of the tang is not totally straight so instead of thinning down the tang which would make the sword weaker I've after gluing it and letting it go solid I've replaced the tang over the top of it and I've scored out what material I need to chisel away so that the tang will slide in a nice tight fit once I've removed that and I've cut it off so that it's in line with the cross guard I'll make sure it fits nice and tight and then I'll glue the third layer on top 
and then we can look into cutting it out, shaping it, cord wrapping it, and leather wrapping it. But yeah, I'll just take this out with a chisel, nice and carefully. I've got my um, handle section cut out. I'm going to put five minute epoxy on it, place it on top of the other piece, and clamp it down and leave it to dry. And once it's dry, then I can start shaping it. And there you go. I'll just leave that overnight, trim it up, and start beveling it tomorrow. Alright, so now I've got to make a pommel for it. I was going to do kind of a pear-shaped pommel, but I can't seem to find that piece. Uh, so instead I've got this piece of uh, round stock, or which I'm not quite sure what it is. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cut a layer off just so just to get rid of this little hole in the top, so I'm going to slice it and then slice off a thickness that is as thick as this pommel here. should probably measure that real quick. Okay, so it is three centimeters, which means I'll have to cut out a three centimeter cross section of this piece of round stock. Then, uh, yeah, then I'll bevel it to be more like a, that got kind of a concave yeah actually I'm not sure what I should do first if I should bevel it or if I should uh, grind a flat section if you notice on these pommels there's a flat section at the bottom there there's a flat section where they transition to the grip so that it's nice and flush so I think I'll grind a flat section and then when that I've got that flat section I can then drill a guide hole straight down through the middle and then that'll make driving a wedge into that a bit easier because well I could grind down the tang of this sword till it is six millimeters round but that would make the blade uh, that would make the sword a lot weaker overall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a 6mm thick piece of steel and I'm going to trace out the tang onto it, cut it out so it's another piece of 6mm thick steel same kind of taper as that I'm going to, well it'll be a bit longer because I'll need a handle and I'm going to heat up the pommel and drive that through it so that the pommel should slide straight over the tang and then come out the other end and I can paint it down okay so I've why does that rooster always go off as soon as I start talking I, I don't know alright so I've glued on the top half let it set overnight and you know, I've cut off the ends and it's such a tight fit that I have to get it on with a plastic mallet so I'm happy with that tightness I just gotta figure out how to get back off <laughs> I'll probably have to use a plastic mallet real carefully on the cross guard work it off then I'm going to round the edges and of course make it a lot thinner in you know want to reduce it in that thickness we're going to use a combination of my flap discs and belt sander. I'm thinking of a relatively rectangular grip, kind of like this other long sword I've got. I believe this one's made by Hunway. So yeah, I'll have to uh, even it up. It's meant to have a bit of a taper to it. So I'll thin it out, give it a taper with the grinding, round the edges, make it nice, and then we will be ready to give it a cord wrap. Okay, so I've smoothed up my handle. It's got a bit of a distal taper. It's a bit thicker in the middle and it tapers down both sides. But it's got a kind of a V shape overall. Now, I've done this thing, I'm not sure what to call it. I've taken some thick leather and I've cut a thin strip of it and I've super glued it on and wrapped it around that's so after I've done my cord wrap 
and leather wrap it'll have these raised sections like on this other long sword of mine so now I've just got to go get the wood glue and twine and I'll be wrapping the whole thing from the narrow ends towards the center because if you go from the thick side down it kind of doesn't keep tension on it as well so I'm going to coat this in wood glue and I'm going to wrap the whole thing in uh, twine or the rope I've got it's a uh, like a jute twine all right, all right so my uh, rope wrap or my cord wrap has dried uh, after I wrapped it I gave it another layer of glue so it's dried nice and hard uh, the riser, or whatever it's called, wasn't sticking out very much, especially after I wrapped it in my leather wrap for a test. It really didn't give it much definition, so I've done an extra thickness of leather. Now, I've got this embossed leather. It's cowhide, but it's embossed to look like crocodile, so uh, that's what I've got. Many of you might know I'm a bit obsessed with crocodiles and crocodile leather, but um, I, for a historical build, wouldn't be using this, but it's all I've got on hand. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I've already made sure that this is only just enough, so it's not too much overlap. It overlaps the ends a little bit, uh, but that's fine. It, it'll end up being wrapped over the ends and hidden by the cross guard and pommel but what I'm going to do is I'm going to on the back edge there I'm going to super glue it in points so it's nice and tight then I'm going to cover the whole handle in uh, a thin layer of wood glue I'm going to wrap it really tight and I'm going to wrap the whole thing in uh, more of the twine to get it a really nice tight fit down onto the handle and leave that to dry. Okay so I've got my pommel but I've had a bit of trouble drilling it. Uh, this is the second one. I didn't keep the drill straight. It came out on a funny angle so I had to redo another one. But also I could not seem to drill the outside surface of whatever kind of metal this is uh, I think it may be case hardened or laminated somehow but the surface around the outside of it is too hard for me to drill uh, maybe it's just surface hardened but my drills just skate over it will not get traction I can drill in from, from the top because I've ground that down but once the drill bit gets down to the other side, it just it spins and yeah, there's just no going through it. So what I'm going to do is what I was probably going to have to do anyway to get the right shape is I'm going to hot drift it. I've taken a piece of steel, I've traced out the tang of the sword plus extra for a spike onto this piece of steel ground it, tapered it, so the idea is now I'm going to get this pommel glowing hot, probably an orange, maybe even a yellow, and I'm going to basically drive this spike straight down through it because it'll be nice and soft when it's glowing bright, and I should be able to punch this spike out through the other end, and I've uh, scored a mark of how deep I want it to go, I don't want it to be too big of a hole for my tang to stick out the end so yeah that's what I'm going to do next alright so yeah I skipped over a whole heap without filming it but let's be honest at this point this video series is more of a video diary than a how to guide so I hope that I've given you all enough information to be able to attempt to do a sword just like this on your own Right, so, did I show anything from the pommel? 
Alright, so the pommel was a piece of round stock. A real pain to drill through it. Yeah, I did show something. Right, so I tried punching it. Uh, uh, I really should have used better steel for the punch. Uh, I tried hot drifting it. Uh, I really should have used better steel for my hot drift I made. I tried to get away with doing it with mild, it wasn't the best, so I then got a 4mm thick round file, I think it was, I think it was called a chainsaw file, but so, yeah, I got one of them, and I filed it out from the inside to widen out. That was taking forever, so then what I did was I got my flat disc grinder, and I just kind of narrowed down the tang, a bit. It's still quite wide. It's about two mil thinner on each side, with a shelf at the bottom. Uh, with a, you know, it's a, it's nice and rounded, so it's not a weak point. But uh, yeah, it forms a shelf, so that's as far down as the hilt will go. Problem was, the opening at the top of the pommel was now quite a bit wider than the hang that I was going to pin down. So in order to pin it down enough to get enough material over the side to hold it in place, I had to move a lot of material from the tank and pin it. However, this material does not seem to like being pinned. It work hardened and started to fracture and crack and chip off really quickly doesn't really move very well. I had the blade in a post device with wood on either side to stop the teeth of the vice uh, marking the sword and when I'd hit the top of the pin the hilt would loosen up. Where I started off it was rock solid on nice and tight. The actual friction of the grip was holding the guard solid. So it would constantly have to hammer down on top of the pommel to re-tighten the grip and it was a bit of a nightmare. It took way longer than it should have. So that's probably the thing I'm least happy about in this whole build to be honest. My job at painting. I have been great luck with that. Uh, so I've learnt that I need to make the hole in whatever I'm painting almost flush or really close to the outside of whatever I'm going to be painting onto it. That way I only have a little bit sticking out, or I only need a little bit sticking out, therefore I don't have to move as much material and that would be a lot easier than what I ended up having to do with this. I had to go out and buy a propane torch to anneal it repeatedly. I'd hammer it a couple of times, it would hard enough, I'd have to, yeah, anneal it again. <sighs> Such a pain, and I'm not really happy with the end result. And there's a little bit of a wiggle in the guard. I think I'm just gonna pour I think I'm just going to pour super glue down into any gap I can find to start get rid of the little bit of tiny little bit of movement there is in there. But if you swing it, it doesn't rattle, but vigorously moving that way or that makes it rattle and I don't like that so yeah I'm going to cheat and pour super glue down it and move on to my next sword I'm thinking of doing a ninja toe but I also want to do a clay temper on it now people say that the curve from katana comes from clay tempering however there are straight clay tempered blades that don't work and I've seen videos of traditional forged swords with traditional clay tempering they 
go into water, they curve forwards in the heat treat, and then they curve back, and it looks like they curve back to the exact same position. And another thing you'll notice is, if you go and look up videos of, or pictures of, Japanese sword masters painting the clay onto the swords before the heat treatment, uh, you'll notice a lot of them are already curved. So, I think that might be a bit of a misunderstanding. Yes, you can curve a blade by heat treating it if, say, if one side of this blade is colder than the other when it comes out and you go to quench it, it will curve towards the colder side. But if it's completely homogeneous in its heat, and then it should come out straight. And I think the same thing should be the same for clay tempering. And I want to try that out. However, I'm going with a ninja toe because I've already got katanas, oh katanas, naginatas. But I don't have a ninja toe, so it would be a bit pointless making another katana. But I want to do a really easy sword and... Ninja Toes and Japanese Swords are pretty basic in their geometries. One attempt at doing it using stock removal, making it a super easy noob build. Make it super easy sword project that just about anyone who can do a knife can do. Because this is, uh, yeah, this wasn't particularly difficult. But I want to try and have a sword made even simpler and hopefully do that as a tutorial. But yeah. I'm not sure what I have not covered already with this. I need to polish it up and get the lines done nicely. Uh, the pommel's still a bit ugly. But the way I did the round pattern in the pommel was I worked it where center was and I put the in, I got my grind, uh, my grinder cut off this, and I put that over it, and I traced the circle out. Uh, I worked out how thick it had to be, and how much material I could take off around it. So you know, the uh, that is a bit of an angle, and you know, just beveled it off with the grinder, then did it with flat discs and use the flat this it's an older one so the edge isn't rectangular it's got a circumference to it I use that to give a circumference to the pommel but I should probably go in with a rounded file and clean that up but yeah, I want to move on to my next sword ah totally forgot to talk about the guard the guard was quite simple I worked out where I had to put the holes, filed it out, uh, I drilled the holes into it, filed it out, then I made, found out where's in line with the blade and luckily the hole slotted into it was in line with the blade so I made the same thickness that way, the width that way and measured it out leaving a centimetre at the end with a 45 degree coming out from it then I took it to my forge heated that up and squished it down so that way it's a bit it widens out a bit in that direction and in that direction and you know it's a little detail but I think it makes it look nicer <sighs> of course um pretty sure I already covered that uh it is recessed a bit to hide the radius in the transition from the blade to the tang. But yeah, I added a little washer at the end in there. It's a bit unsightly. I really didn't need to. I thought it would make it look better. I think I should take some permanent black marker and just uh, darken the edges because now it's 
know, it's cut leather, you can see the areas that aren't dyed. So I might just take a black permanent marker and re-blacken them, but yeah. I'm very pleased with it. Well, not very pleased, but a bit, um, I'm okay with it. It's a decent sort. It's my first sort, so. Yeah, I am quite a strong critic of my own work. And I've learnt a lot building this, and I've learnt how to do things that I didn't know beforehand, and yeah, my next sword should be better, hopefully. Yeah. Oh. And for those who are interested, the point of balance is there. So, it feels like a rape here in the hand almost. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I've held a historically accurate rapier, but it is very light and very long. The blade ended up being about 760 grams by itself. Uh, I'll just go weigh it and come right back and tell you the total weight for those who are interested. Okay, so the overall weight is 1.424 kilos. A bit heavier than I was aiming for. Honestly, it handles fine without a pommel. So, yeah, when I didn't have a pommel, it was still handling fine. You know, it's got a pommel now, so it's even more nimble in the hand. But, um, yeah, it's about 120 centimeters with a 93 centimeter blade at yeah, 1.424 kilos. So I really should have looked up what the historically accurate dimensions of a Oakshot Type 15 longsword are. Uh, so I think this might be a uh, Type 15A. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't do the most research on this. You know, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with swords, so that's one of the things I'm a bit mm, disappointed in myself about. I didn't do more research on this actual particular style of sword before making it. I should have had all my specs on the dimensions of a historically accurate Type 15A longsword before I even started. But, you know, I just knew about these swords, have seen tons of them, have experience with longswords and handling other kinds of swords, and, you know, I just kind of read it. Real. So, yeah. Bit disappointed in myself, I should have done more research. But, I, re I think it, you know, turned out. Alright, of course it doesn't look historical with that crocodile embossed leather grip. So I reckon it does look nice. Yeah. It is real leather, but they have soaked it in water and pressed it to give it the appearance of crocodile leather. And I use that because that's what I had available. I've got like a whole, or at least half a cow hide's worth. So I'll be using that on a couple of swords. I'll use it on my Japanese style sword, which is totally historically inaccurate, but yeah. Alright, that's enough blabbing me, I think. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed, uh, please leave a like and a comment. I 
I do these videos mostly for the social interaction and to bring entertainment to others. So, uh, you know, if I don't get any feedback from it. It kind of feels like I'm, yeah, kind of feels like I'm wasting my time. So, um, yeah, uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video series. And uh, hopefully, we'll stick around for the next video on DIY sword making. There's Oh, I almost forgot, the uh, piece of steel I started off with was 36 and a quarter inches or um, 92 centimeters long, one and three quarters of an inch wide at the thick end, tapering down in a triangle, which is uh, four and a half centimeters at the thick end, about. Oh, and 6mm thick, yeah. just for reference, and it's come out into that huge piece, which is way longer than this. Right.